Hello friends. Today we continue our three-part study of Romans chapter 12, and I'm reading to you from verse 3 through 13 from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. It says, For by the grace given to me, I say to every one among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, Serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. In my last video, I offered an interpretation of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And I said that we are living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God by the way we live and act and behave in the world. I also said that the body is our instrument in serving God and living for God, and that it matters how we treat our bodies and what we do with our bodies. Today, we're going to continue our three-part study of Romans chapter 12 by looking specifically at verse 3 through 13. In these 10 verses, Paul continues in his theme of the body, but here he's not literally talking about the human body. He extends his conversation and uses the idea of body as a metaphor. When he uses the term body, he's now talking about the church, the community of faith. In these 10 verses, Paul introduces almost 11 major ideas. This indicates how deep and wide Paul's writing is in this letter to this particular community of Christians. In these 10 verses, he addresses topics like the church is the body of Christ. He talks about the gifts in the church. He talks about love, hope, and extending hospitality all of which are crucial to the life of the believing community. But all of that takes second place to humility. In verse 3, he says, Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but think with sober judgment. Here, Paul is warning against arrogance. In the Roman church at that time, there were people who felt that they were superior or more important than other people. As he launches into this discourse, the theme of humility is in first place so that he can show that humility is foundational in the life of Christians. Humility is a recurring theme in Paul's letters and writings. He talks about humility here in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, but also in 2 Corinthians 10, 1, 2 Corinthians 12, 21, Philippians 2, 1 through 8, Colossians 2, 18, Colossians 2, 23, then Colossians 3, 12, and Ephesians 4, 2. And in several other places, he also speaks of humility as one of the cornerstones of the Christian life and Christian attitude. Let's look closer at the word humility for a moment. Humility is a noun, and it means having a low estimation of oneself. In Christian thought, being humble means that one should decrease so that the power and work of God can increase. 
But being humble doesn't mean that one should have low self-esteem. It means that we shouldn't think and act as if we're superior to others. We can be confident and strong, but yet still be humble and kind. Humility is an attitude that we initiate, we choose, placing ourselves in second position so that God always comes first. In Romans 12, Paul directly addresses humility in the context of spiritual gifts. He says that there are people who have these gifts in our community and they are meant to build up and strengthen the community. Each gift should be celebrated, but that it becomes problematic when one person thinks that their gift is better or more important than another person's gift. When that attitude creeps in, our gifts no longer nourish the community. It actually becomes life draining for people because we become so focused on ourselves that God gets pushed off on the sidelines. Our gifts come directly from God. It doesn't matter how much we practice or learn. If God isn't at the center of what we do, we will become ineffective. This text today from Romans chapter 12 is challenging us to reassess and re-examine our attitude and to adopt a new attitude of humility so that when we stand before God's people or when we serve God, we will decrease and God will increase and people will move closer to God. Our gifts are not to be used to put us in the spotlight, but to shed light on the will and word of God. Paul is discouraging a boastful spirit and is instead encouraging Christians to be dependent on one another, to work together, to share a common goal, to touch people where they hurt and bring people out of the trenches of life. So today, whatever your gifts and skills may be, writing encouraging notes, cooking, baking, praying with others, community organizing, home repairs, whatever they may be, use them to help others. And whatever we do, let's adopt a humble and sincere attitude so that others may know God through us and be blessed. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord abides forever. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Goodbye for now.